For years ago, an epidemic that originated in China left a lasting impact on every individual around the globe. Recently, however, there are alarming indications that COVID-19 is on the rise again, with increasing reports of reinfections and worsening symptoms. Concurrently, anthrax, a bacterium also known as a biological weapon, has been breaking out in several regions. Experts now voice their concerns about the potential emergence of a more devastating super-pandemic poised to sweep across the world. It's all covered in today's China Truths. Anthrax outbreak hits China, hidden details emerge behind official announcements. On August 2, 2024, independent television producer Li Jun, while speaking on NTD's Elite Forum program, talked about an anthrax outbreak at a cattle farm in Qiji Township, Yanggu County, Shandong Province, as reported by the CCP's official broadcaster, CCTV. This incident led to the culling of several dozen cattle and five confirmed human infections. However, narratives from local media and netizens diverge significantly from this official account. On the same day, the local Xiaoxiang Morning Post on its WeChat channel reported potential spread of the disease beyond the initial site, impacting multiple other villages and towns. Online comments from Yanggu residents suggest the outbreak was initially unreported, with over 80 cattle dead and some of the contaminated meat allegedly sold clandestinely. Additionally, posts on the X platform indicated human deaths from anthrax on August 1 in Chiji Township, leading to the quarantine of several villages and the closure of the fourth floor of the county hospital, approximately 80 to 90 individuals were reportedly affected. In response, the Shandong Lian Yuan Holding Group Company in Yanggu County has advised the public against consuming beef and visiting Chiji Township. To date, the Yanggu County CDC has issued a solitary statement largely corroborating the CCTV report. However, on August 4, 2024, Zhang Wenhong, the director of China's National Center for Infectious Diseases, emphasized the necessity of monitoring environmental contamination with anthrax bacilli and ensuring the harmless processing of affected animals. Li Jun noted that this anthrax outbreak has exacerbated the woes of the domestic beef market. Since 2023, beef prices have steadily declined from an average wholesale price of 84 yuan per kilogram, about 12.06 US dollars, to 76 yuan, about 10.06 US dollars, in April 2024, and plummeted to 61 yuan, about 8.56 US dollars, by June, coinciding with the outbreak and deepening the despair of cattle farmers. Insights on anthrax and its implications. American virologist Lin Xiaoxiu, former director of the Viral Laboratory at the U.S. Army Research Institute, said that anthrax, caused by the Bacillus anthracis bacterium, poses significant zoonotic threats and is not a virus. He outlined that the primary transmission routes for this bacterium include inhaling spores through the respiratory tract, with a mortality rate as high as 70 percent, and direct skin contact which can result in severe lesions and potentially necessitate amputation if not addressed promptly. Consumption of contaminated meat can also lead to severe infections characterized by intense abdominal pain and potentially fatal outcomes. The most effective method to eliminate anthrax bacteria involves thorough incineration, merely burying infected carcasses can perpetuate contamination. Moreover, Lin Xiaoxiu highlighted that this issue is not confined to Shandong alone. He referred to an important alert from the Heilongjiang CDC on August 3, which emphasized the risk of anthrax during the summer flood season, a focus uncommon relative to typical flood-associated diseases such as cholera or malaria. This precaution underscores previous mishandling of infected animal carcasses that led to soil contamination, raising concerns that upcoming floods might extend this contamination further, reflecting a situation with historical precedents. In July 2019, Heilongjiang province experienced an outbreak of bovine anthrax attributed to the improper processing of deceased cattle, leading to soil contamination that was exacerbated by floodwaters. Aware of these historical and current issues, Heilongjiang officials have issued special alerts and reminders. Lin concluded that no specific treatments for anthrax exist currently, and while vaccines are available, their effectiveness is limited. Anthrax bacteria, formerly a preferred biological weapon among terrorists, 
are relatively simple to cultivate and can be processed into a stable powdered form, presenting an enduring threat. China's weakened immunity, more severe cases and deaths than other nations. Guo Jun, the editor-in-chief of the Epoch Times, discussed a recent warning from the World Health Organization about a global surge in COVID-19 infections, raising concerns about a possible resurgence of the pandemic. According to Guo, the Chinese Health Commission and the CDC are struggling with a lack of precise data on the emerging coronavirus outbreaks across mainland China. She highlighted that in Guangdong alone, the number of people who tested positive for COVID-19 in July exceeded 18,000, a dramatic increase from June's figures, which were over 10,000 cases, a 130% rise within just a month. Furthermore, numerous internet users in China have reported experiencing multiple infections with more severe and prolonged symptoms, potentially linked to new variants. These symptoms include dizziness, body aches, severe fever, and intense coughing. Many believe that this wave of the virus has now spread widely across mainland China. Virologist Lin Xiaoxu has commented on the increased transmissibility of these new viral variants. In mainland China, variants such as KP.2 and XDV, which are essentially sub-variants of the JN.1 strain, have better adapted to human transmission. Lin pointed out that while other countries have not observed a significant increase in the virus's lethality in recent months, the infection rates have escalated globally, including in the United States. However, the rate of severe cases has not shown a comparable increase, suggesting that this wave may not be perceived as particularly severe internationally. Lin emphasized that the situation in China is not just about virus mutations, it also involves widespread damage to the population's immunity. This profound immunological weakness means that when new outbreaks occur, many Chinese suffer from intense symptoms. Despite some decline in cases, the ongoing presence of COVID-19 has led to repeated infections and continuous health challenges for many, including chronic COVID symptoms and long-lasting aftereffects. This is especially true among the youth, many of whom have been diagnosed with conditions such as lung nodules and pulmonary embolisms. Despite surviving the virus, their overall health remains compromised, potentially leading to sudden deaths and other severe health issues during rigorous activities. Frequent sudden deaths, netizen reports increase in funeral services. As we've reported previously, there have been numerous reports of sudden deaths throughout the country. Notably, Wang Nan, a former coach and captain of the Heilongjiang province men's basketball team, succumbed to cardiac arrest on July 4 at the age of 42. Similarly, Zhang Jichia, a young athlete from China's national youth badminton team, passed away suddenly while competing in Indonesia on June 30 at just 17 years old, with cardiac arrest again cited as the cause. The trend of unexpected fatalities extends beyond public figures to everyday workers. In the first 10 days of May alone, 23 rideshare drivers experienced sudden deaths. Furthermore, a resident of Hunan who regularly travels a dedicated 200 km route has observed an uptick in funeral services, highlighting the severity of the situation. Will humanity face a super pandemic? Beyond the COVID-19 pandemic, virologist Lin Xiaoxu also mentioned that there is a current outbreak of monkeypox spreading primarily in Africa, centered in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, with many adjacent cities and countries also reporting cases, particularly of the more virulent monkeypox type 1 virus. Since 2022, the less lethal type 2 virus has also been spreading in the West. According to Lin, we are living in a special era where many viruses and bacteria, previously thought to have been eradicated, are re-emerging and becoming increasingly dangerous, posing unprecedented threats to humanity. Building on this, Guo Jun, exploring the historical aspects of pandemics, identifies two principal factors that have often triggered widespread outbreaks. She starts with climate change, explaining that global warming or significant climatic shifts do more than cause discomfort, they drive mass migrations of animals, such as birds and rodents, which can transport localized viruses into new regions. Gua then discussed the significant shifts in human society, particularly massive changes in human activities, as the second critical factor. She illustrated this with historical events such as the Mongol unification of the Eurasian continent, which led to extensive migrations and, centuries later, 
to the Black Death in Europe. Another instance is the severe plague during the terminal phase of China's Eastern Han Dynasty, linked to the Han's decisive victory over the Xiongnu, which resulted in large-scale movements of nomadic tribes into China. Additionally, she mentioned the catastrophic impact on Native Americans following European exploration of the Americas, where the introduction of new diseases decimated populations with no previous exposure or immunity. Guo said that our current era mirrors these historical conditions, with rapid changes in climate and human activities that aren't just about exploring new territories but are characterized by unprecedented speeds of movement. Guo Jun pointed out that during the Black Death in Europe and in ancient China, quarantine was the most effective way to control infectious diseases. Back then, a person's movement was limited, they could only travel up to 20 kilometers a day, so isolating within a certain area could usually stop the spread of a virus. But that's no longer the case. Today, someone infected with a virus can travel around the world within the three-day incubation period, which poses a huge challenge due to how human mobility has changed. Regarding whether pandemics happen every 100 or 80 years, and whether we're now safe since COVID-19 has ended, it's crucial to understand that these timeframes are just statistical probabilities. A so-called once-in-a-century event could actually happen multiple times within just a few years. That's why many experts are deeply worried, believing that the rapid pace of human activity and climate change could very likely bring about a super-pandemic, potentially even more severe and dangerous than COVID-19 in recent years. How should we respond? The ongoing pandemic in China, characterized by frequent reinfections, has weakened the immune systems of many, increasing vulnerability to other respiratory pathogens. Environmental factors like sandstorms further compromise respiratory health. In such conditions, the same diseases result in more severe cases in China, a point rarely addressed by domestic experts. Lin Xiaoxu stressed the need to strengthen immunity, highlighting that domestic experts often overlook these factors. European virologist Dr. Dong Yuhong echoed this, noting that as infection rates rise, the virus becomes more adept at evading immunity from existing vaccines. Dr. Dong advised proactive measures to maintain immune defenses. She said, what stays constant is the innate multiple immune barriers within our bodies, including epithelial cells, natural immune cells, antiviral components, and other elements of natural immunity. These are dependable. If we all focus on nurturing, strengthening, and protecting them, they'll work effectively. Adding a perspective, last but very important, virologist Lin Xiaoxu mentioned that people need to have faith, a spiritual anchor to hold on to in challenging times. During a major pandemic, we can feel incredibly insignificant, so it becomes crucial to believe in the higher power of gods and Buddhas. He stated, throughout history, when pandemics have spread globally, there are numerous examples showing the importance of keeping a kind heart and remaining calm. Ultimately, people around the world need a chance to be reborn from these challenges, I believe that's exactly the case. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths.